Hey everyone, uh, this is Andy and I'm living in Dubai. I'm working at SAE Dubai and I'm teaching here the audio production degree and uh, I'm going to make some tutorials about um, that really to go together with my studio classes and uh, you know classroom classes here at SAE Dubai. I'm in their studio right now. Basically going to talk about gain structure and headroom um, during mixing and recording. It's really the fundamental basics at the beginning of really sound engineering and, uh, and it's going to make music production a lot easier and mix is going to sound better. Gain structure benefits going to be the following zero distortion at the final output Transients on drums and cymbals much clearer. The mix is going to be much clearer. Healthy recording levels, so you're going to have less corrective editing later on, no drum replacement and things like that. You're going to have uh, more headroom, freedom to produce the sounds with EQs and effects, which I'm going to demonstrate. Um, no clipping, good master fader output. This is going to be good for the mastering guys. Also, the benefits you're going to hear difference between plugins. You're going to be the boss of the mix rather than the mix bossing you around. And when you're working in high pressure situations with, with multiple multiple people, you'll find yourself being able to you know just complete really simple requests you know just because of this gain structure. So um, so yeah, I'm just going to flip now to the Pro Tools and get started. So the problem is that a lot of audio comes in super hot. So here I have a tone generator, and you can see it's bobbing around zero. Just one little note here, I'm using Pro Tools Classic meter. There's loads of meter options. I'm going to stick with Pro Tools Classic so we're all on the same page. But what happens if you duplicate this 31 times? Check the master fader, it's destroyed. I mean the output is you know enormously clipping so this is the problem you know and you're going to bounce that file out uh, and the distortion and the waveform is going to be clipped to, to, to death you know so uh, this is the problem. The idea is to, to bring down these recording levels. Now I'm gonna flip to a music session. So I've got a simple music session here as a drum mix, bass lines, stereo guitar and some synths or shakers or something. Audio way too hot. If I'm looking at my meters there, you know, alarm bells are ringing, it doesn't need to be that high. And you can see I've only got like, this is a five track mix. What, one, two, three, four, five track mix. And uh, output already, you know, really hot running hot on the plugins if I add a little bit of EQ already I'm distorting the plugin so this is a problem you know so what you can use in Pro Tools is a trim plugin and you can just trim the audio down now I'm averaging 18 or 20 averaging there peaking maximum at minus 5 so I don't need to be peaking above there so I'm going to turn down all the levels which I've done already press play One more thing, on a bigger mix, even with the audio trimmed down like it is, this solution, it still needs to change. Create an all audio group, then bring the faders down. Start down there somewhere. So I'm gonna play without sound, check the mix without sound. So basically I can group all the audio, and rather than starting here on zero, Gonna probably start somewhere around there, depending on the size of the track. Start around, you know, minus 10 or something like that. And that is a good system. Changing to the Logic program, got a couple of sessions ready for you. Test tone again, coming in quite high, you know, coming in quite high. Often a lot of audio comes along that way and a lot of a lot of plugins, uh, synthesizer plugins, drum machine plugins, all, also output this high, and uh, you know it's not good. Check the final output; it's through the roof, and and uh, obviously that is not going to sound good. But what what the danger is that it sounds fine this side, no distortion whatsoever. You wouldn't realize there's a problem until you bounce it out, and uh, your client will let you know there's a problem. That's for sure. Here's what your waveform is going to look like. Zooming in, just did a little bounce there already. And you can see that is clipped to hell. I mean, that is just distortion, uh, out, you know, out of control. Not good. So, changing sessions. What's the solution here again? 
This time, levels much lower, just gone into the oscillator, turned it down. Much lower, it's going to be uh, much, it's going to be much more civilized. Output much more civilized, it's just clipped from remembering the last time. Then, I want to bring my faders down. My faders themselves are going to be kind of around there, let's say, in the middle of the fader, and the loud things, vocals, are going to be, they're all grouped right now, so if I ungroup them, basically the loudest thing, as an, as an ideal rule, I generally don't want to be, if I faders are up here, something wrong, I'm going to be maximum at zero, sometimes sneaking a little bit over, but really I want to be averaging around there, you know, and that's healthy output, looking good. So, you know, this is kind of how my meters are going to be uh, looking and my faders. Rather than listening to test tones and watching test tones, got a bit of MIDI programming here. Simple, simple beats, couple of sounds. Again, I'm going to jump to the mixer. Just playing without, without sound. Check in a mix with just meters. They do it a lot. I do it, you know, occasionally. It's good to check a mix without sound, although it does sound bizarre. Now, a lot of these plugins have very high outputs. For example, if I take this bass. I'm just playing from the Mac speakers here, so, you know, excuse the sound. Some plugins come with a volume, this is perfect. So I can basically do my gain trim effectively from there. If I feel it's too high, I can just bring it down. And of course the volume is going to drop obviously, so you just turn up your control room volume and, and this is going to be, it's, you know, it's going to be really beneficial. Actually it sounds better. If your plugins do not have an output volume, for example, Ultra Beat, if you can't find, or if you can't find an output volume, maybe there's even one here and I, I just don't know where it is. I couldn't find an output volume on there, but if someone else knows, then that's fine. Otherwise, you can still use the gain on instruments, you know, any instruments, you can still use the gain. One of the benefits of doing this, which I have found, you will hear when you're switching around different compressor modes, you you actually start hearing a difference between between the different compressor styles, the optical style and the and the and the VCA style. You're gonna start with your gain structure all set, you're gonna be hearing that stuff. A, a really this is a great a, you know it's a great side effect I guess of, of, of doing this gain structure and being organized is that you're gonna hear different delay styles and, and all kinds of things like that. So that is very cool. Same thing now, I'm going to switch to Reaper. So switching to Reaper, folks, if you don't have access to these multi-track files, there's a great resource online. This guy, Mike Senior, he has this site, free multi-track download library, 220 free multi-track projects. It's all royalty free and obviously not for sale, but it's really good to practice on. There's a, there's a vast range. Also, um, I would recommend reading this. He has a book. It's an excellent book and it's an excellent website. Check this out, Gain Staging Like a Boss. This is really the, the subject of, of, of this tutorial and uh, he really takes it through and he's got a few more details about um, DB values and things like that. Also, uh, Recording Revolution, they're doing some awesome blogs, really good. And I wanted to show these because just so you know that it's not just my you know, my great ideas, you know, this stuff is tried and tested, it's old school, you know, this gain staging idea is old school methods, man, and, um, you know, really, really very, very useful, and, um, you know, it's what the, what the pros are doing. Just jumping back into Reaper, I'm not going to spend too long on this one, because we've already covered it twice, really, but the same idea, I'm going to play the mix without sound, check the meters, nothing slamming into the red on the channel faders, a volume plugin, they call it volume, not gain here. It's the same idea. So I've got that volume plugin. Um, and the final output, nice and healthy, you know. Um, so that's about it really. Done done the gain stage in uh, Pro Tools, Logic and Reaper. And I hope you find that useful. Thanks. Just to finalize really, if, you, if you're out there and you've got like your sessions with your audio running super hot, just give this a try. 
you know, put a trim plug in, you can do it in Logic or any program, just put a trim plug in, trim your audio down, if you know, and try it out, and I would, I would guarantee you your mix is gonna sound better. Just wanna recap the benefits of good gain structure, you're gonna have zero distortion at the output, better sounding mixes, healthier recording levels, good master output, better headphone mixes, you're gonna hear the difference between plugins, you're gonna be the boss of your mix, um, what more can I say? I hope that's been useful for you. Thanks for watching. Cheers.